This isn't snow. It's limestone. And miners risk their lives to carve it out of the white quarries of Egypt. The valuable rock is at the center of a huge industry. And it's used to make everything from cement and glass to plastic and tiles. It's even what the Great Pyramids were made out of. But digging up and cutting these precious blocks is really dangerous. Miners face clouds of dust that can cause diseases, and they work with sharp blades under the brutal sun, with temperatures reaching beyond 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And all they have to protect them is a cloth mask. Atif Fatih Zaki has been working here since he was just 14 years old. All for a wage of just about $6 a day. But in this area, it's one of the only available jobs. The government has tried to crack down on mines after a slew of deaths. But many are still operating, even illegally. We head to Egypt to see just how bad mine conditions are and learn why miners take the risk anyway. About 160 miles south of Cairo sits one of the largest limestone deposits in the world. This is Almina, Egypt, and hundreds of mines dot the landscape. Tens of thousands of freelance miners chip away at this land. For these guys, each day starts in Minya City at dawn. And this is where the danger begins. These trucks aren't meant for passengers. Workers have gotten injured from falls along the winding journey. The trip to the mountain takes about 40 minutes. The workers first share a meal while the sun rises. Then it's time to get suited up. Since these miners are freelancers, they have to buy their own protective gear. Often, homemade cloth masks, gloves, and sunglasses are all miners have to shield them. They grab their tools and descend into the pit. The most important one is the round saw, and that's also the most dangerous. First, miners have to set up these two rails. Two separate machines roll along the tracks. They slice the stone into perfect cuboids beneath. The machines move quickly. They're really heavy and they're loud. Workers shout at each other to warn the machines are nearby because the real hazard is those saws. A quick step is all that separates miners from razor-sharp blades. Miners are responsible for fixing the machines when they break and sharpening the blades by hand. That's also risky work. The cutting machines used to have coverings, but they fell off years ago. Now the blades are exposed. While the mine owner says he makes sure the electrical wires are covered, many are unprotected. As the machines cut stone, they kick up rocks in a haunting white cloud of limestone powder. If there's no wind, miners disappear in it, like ghosts. It's easy to inhale the fine dust. And if they breathe it long enough, it can cause a lung condition called silicosis. I'm 
أصعب شغلة دي في الصيف بالنسبة لي ما فيش هوا. Injuries, sickness, and death in these mines are widely reported, but there aren't any official numbers. At one point, the life expectancy here was just 45 years old. في ناس دراعتها تقطعت من الموس. في ناس دماغها لمغزى الموس دخل فيها ماتت. ناس كتير بعيد عنك تقطع ترجلة. Zaki says many mine owners will offer under $200 by way of workers' comp. التعويض ما يسكرش. بالنسبة لي دم تقطع رجل وما تقطع عيد وهي هي تعو الرجل تعود ولا الرجل تعود ما تعوج. Once the stone is safely cut, workers turn the blocks so the machine doesn't break them as it goes by again. At the start of a new quarry, the stones don't come out perfect. Those chunks head to a separate factory to be ground into powder. Perfectly cut stones that haven't been sold yet get stacked. But these blocks have already been purchased, so miners throw them straight into the truck. And they have perfect aim. If they're lucky, they might get a $3 stipend for food and tea on top of their $6 daily wage. The bricks are sent to Cairo, which has around 80% of Egypt's limestone processing capacity. The limestone is made into cement and tiles and used in papermaking, plastic production, agricultural products, and even medicine. Globally, the limestone market hit an estimated 73 billion in 2020. Today, Egypt is the largest exporter of limestone in Africa, producing more than 150,000 metric tons. The stone is so lucrative that Minya's economy depends on it. That's why many miners do this work. Their $6 wage is more than they'll make farming or working in construction. انت حط نفسك مكان انت راي متجوز ومخلف ومعاك عيال وعايز تصرف عليه وما فيش غير الشغلة دي في محافظة المنيا فعشان كم ما نشتغل هي ما فيش غير محافظة المنيا جامعة الشغلة دي. And more people from students to farmers flock to the mines when unemployment spikes. متزوج وعندي بنتين وانا طبعا انا اللي بعول الأسرة طبعا. But human exploitation for mining limestone in this area is not new. In fact, its history is ancient. Through the years, Egyptians used the stone in pyramids, temples, and tombs. Dark limestone made up the core of the Great Pyramids of Giza. And blinding white limestone once covered the outside, symbolizing purity and sacredness. Then, in 1303, an earthquake loosened the outer stones of the Great Pyramid. The white layer was stripped off to be used in the construction of mosques. Today, by one estimate, more than half the limestone quarries in Minya are unlicensed. The government has cracked down on some, closing 400 by 2019 after reports of injuries. But many illegal mines are still operating, with deadly conditions and no oversight. So, workers have had to take matters into their own hands. They negotiated a pay raise and created a fund for injured workers and their families. But they face pushback from mine owners. The mine we filmed is licensed. It's called Uncle Walid's. But the owner told Business Insider the miners still have to provide their own gear. At the end of his shift, Atif relaxes with a cup of tea and a meal with his friends. The eerily beautiful mind stretches in front of them. It's a beauty they hope will get the world's attention, enough to send some help. The people don't want to eat and drink 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 and dr